Hello, preschool parents. This is Miss Megan and Miss Alyssa. Hello. Um, we are on week four of our parent-child interaction strategies, and today we are going to talk about gestures and pausing. Um, so just to review, when you're using gestures, which are basically any kind of a hand movement, um, you are supporting your child's understanding. So for example, um, if you wanted to ask your child if they want a drink, you could include um, a gesture. Do you want a drink? Um, and that just helps them to understand. Some of our children are more visual learners um, than what we call auditory learners. So if your child has a hard time kind of understanding when it's just the hearing, when you just say drink, by adding in that visual gesture, um, you will support their understanding. Um, you wanna be consistent with your gestures. So if you use drink, that's the sign and the gesture you wanna use every time. You wanna make sure that your child is looking at you when you use it. So you wouldn't want them watching TV and you're talking kind of you know behind them. Um, you wanna be face to face. And that also helps with just understanding in general. Once you have your child's attention, you've called their name and let's say they're looking at you, it's a much better time to give them um, an instruction or playing with them than it is and they're like kind of off doing something different. Um, and you always want to make sure that you speak and say the word with the gesture. So again, going to back to that drink one, if you said, um, maybe you're during, like maybe it's during play and you're playing with a baby and baby's drinking. So you do the gesture with the word drink. And let's see. Um, gestures do come naturally to us. The majority of our communication is actually what we call nonverbal. Um, so verbal is like when we're talking, but the majority of our communication is the nonverbal. So like the gestures I'm using right now, um, facial expressions, intonation, like how my voice changes. So there is a lot more to communicating than just talking. It's the gestures, like I said, are a way to help the child understand the language. They can kind of give clues. So if they're not really understanding um, just the word on its own, it gives them a clue because you're kind of doing the motion that is the actual word that you're talking about. <clears throat> yeah. And then our um, kind of second strategy this week is around pausing. So when you have said something to your child, you want to then pause and you wanna give them time to communicate back. A lot of times as adults, we're very, very good talkers and we don't leave pauses. We don't give our children a chance to respond. So if you leave a pause, it's almost, again, it's that nonverbal, it's that kind of cue to them like, oh, it's my turn to say something, it's my turn to talk. And you may not always get something, but even if you get like eye contact and they look at you, or <clears throat> if they do a gesture and try and sign something to you, or if they try to attempt at saying the word, all of that is really good for them. And you're, they're doing that because you've left that pause. Um, you can show them that you're kind of waiting for them expectantly like you're looking at them you're you know kind of giving them again a cue that you want them to respond and say something and then if your child does not respond you can go ahead and say the words that they would say if they could say them but at least you've given them that chance you've done the pause then if they can't respond then you can go ahead and give the words um I'm just looking over at the pamphlet that we're gonna send you guys just to see if there's anything else I wanna add. You guys can always read over them. And again, like we say every week, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, but Alyssa is gonna go over kind of one of the activities and we're gonna demonstrate. Um, another quick side note, our general rule of thumb <laughs> for pausing is about five seconds. So if you take five seconds, it seems a lot longer when you actually wait the five seconds. So that's a kind of a strategy SLPs love to do. It's like wait the five seconds. Um, and 
if you do that and can do kind of practice with that it ends up feeling kind of awkward but it really gives the children that time to process what you said think about how they want to respond if they want to respond expressively with their words or if they want to respond you know by following the direction that you said so that five seconds it sounds like it's not a lot of time but it really is a lot of time and it's what they need to be able to respond appropriately so we're going to do some activities with bubbles um, kind of centering around the gesturing and the pausing so in this example i'm going to be the child and miss megan's going to be the parent and i'm um, just going to be blowing some bubbles and we're going to start with gesturing so all right so i'm just a little child blowing bubbles and i'm blowing and this kind of blowing. builds on the commenting too like she's commenting on what i'm doing <clears throat> associating a, a gesture with it with bringing it up to her mouth and now me as a child i see she is bringing the gesture up and I can associate that with the word blowing and next time I do this I can say oh blowing bubble I'll land it on the screen yeah. all, right. <laughs> all right and so now we're gonna do another example with bubbles mm -hmm. with pausing so I'm the child again and Miss Megan is the parent right we're gonna blow some bubbles right, so. so she's gonna wait for me and another part of um, pausing is starting a sentence and waiting for your child to kind of finish the sentence off for you. All right. Ready, set, blow. <gasps> and so as soon as I verbally expressed what I wanted, which was I wanted her to blow the bubbles, she did it. So um, having that pause time and really waiting, it can be hard sometimes, and I was just telling her I'm guilty of this, you want to just give in to what they want. You know what they want, but you really need to wait until they say it or give an attempt at saying, I want the bubbles. Um, that will really motivate them in the future to use their words to express what they want, what they need, um, feelings, things like that. So when I when she waited until I said, go or blow, and then she did it, now in my head I'm like, oh, if I say it with my words, then I get what I want. So... That's gesturing and pausing. And again, if you have any questions, you can um, email us and we will be happy to answer them for you. Bye. Bye.